morning everyone I just woke up and I had a good sleep I hope you got a good sleep last night too and today we're gonna talk about photography okay so yeah let's get started So today we're gonna pick up some things at the mall first and then after that we're gonna come back and then we're gonna talk about landscape photography okay so yeah landscape photography isn't exactly difficult so yeah I can uh, maybe share a little tips with you when it comes to landscape photography and also I want to share my gear of choice which might be surprising for you because I'm currently using micro four thirds which is not really a popular kind of camera system so yeah I'm gonna share why I chose micro four thirds what's the benefit and what's the disadvantages and why I kept using them until today back to home after we picked up the things from the mall I just want to talk a little bit about micro four thirds so micro four thirds is basically a camera system it is not as large as a full frame or APS-C sensor so uh, what I mean by that is the sensor size so uh, there are some of uh, benefits that comes with that uh, first is that you get more depth of field with the same aperture you can also have like smaller lens overall uh, most of micro four thirds lenses aren't aren't that big they're small they're tiny they're lightweight and it's easy for them to travel and yeah I travel a lot so I need uh, portability compact size uh, that kind of thing but there are some drawbacks too that are uh, present with micro forte sensor uh, one is that they don't do so well in low light and then they also don't produce shallow depth of field uh, for the same aperture let's say f2.8 on full frame you get really blurred background but with micro four thirds it's not as blurred So even though there are benefits and disadvantages of using micro four thirds, there are some things that makes me uh, comfortable with using micro four thirds. So yeah, I travel a lot so I prefer micro four thirds because it's lightweight, it's easy to carry, it doesn't take up too much space in my luggage and it's a good quality I mean it's enough for me that I don't really require a full frame camera or an APS-C so I'm gonna eat lunch first and then we're gonna talk again later okay it's the new Indomie Chitato thing it's really good actually So yeah, that's why I choose Micro Four Thirds. It has the right compromises and the picture quality is good enough for me because I'm not a professional photographer or videographer. I just want to get a good quality picture, that's all. And Micro Four Thirds facilitate me to do that without the hassle of a big camera, giant lenses and heavy gear, you know. Now that there are a lot of new full frame mirrorless camera and even medium format camera like uh, Fujifilm the competition has been very fierce for micro four thirds because now even the full frame cameras they got slightly smaller they got slightly lighter lenses and they're more portable now than ever and the image quality is above micro four thirds but I think for me personally micro four thirds still has the advantage when it comes to landscape photography Alright, before we continue talking about gear, I want to explain first what landscape photography is for me, what consists of a good landscape photography, what I look for in a landscape photography, and the purpose of landscape photography for me. So landscape photography for me is capturing a photograph of nature at its best. And what I mean by that is to capture 
you know a specific feature that's happening on the nature for example like a mountain or maybe like flower field or maybe like a valley or maybe like a lake a river ocean something like that something that's geographically in the nature but rather than just capturing it like a snapshot for me personally landscape photography has to has its own added value what I mean by that is you have to uh, capture it from an angle from a perspective that makes it look really great you know you have to give context to what you shoot and for me personally being able to give that context to the nature that you are shooting it's gonna make your photograph stand above the average landscape photography let me explain so maybe you want to capture a good mountain on the scenery and you want to be able to give context to the mountain so you don't just shoot the mountain by itself like it's gonna be boring it's gonna turn out into a snapshot not a photograph I'd usually find some little things and I put it on the foreground so that uh, it becomes an interest for your eye so that when you capture the mountain with that thing it's gonna give you a sense of perspective a context now that for me is a recipe for a successful landscape photography other recipe will include good timing and also good lighting choose the right time of the day so that you get the golden hour or blue hour so that you can really emphasize the features of the nature that you're trying to capture for me personally I capture landscape photography as part of travel photography usually it's part of my travel and uh, usually I try to squeeze a few hours to shoot some place that I can make into a landscape photography and because of that sometimes I come to those kind of places where I want to shoot landscape photography in a less than ideal condition and when that happens you have to maximize every other aspects of your shooting of your technique of whatever is available for your advantage to really get the picture to look as good as possible I'm not a professional landscape photographer sometimes I have to deal with travel limitations because usually the purpose of my travel is not landscape photography landscape photography is to complement my travel now I'm gonna show you some pictures I'm gonna pull it out these are some of the examples of an ideal landscape photography that I captured before the first picture here is the picture of uh, Lake Louis uh, in Alberta Canada and you know I want to capture the scenery mainly the lake and the mountain behind it and a little bit of the glacier in the middle but what happens if I just captured just the water and just the mountain it's not gonna work out that well because then you don't really have any point of interest for your eyes you don't really get to a sense of perspective when you see the picture without the added foreground so I add a little bit of foreground using little rocks in front of the lake and also I added a little bit of trees uh, on the right side of the picture you can sense how big the mountain is and you can really get Get the sense of the depth uh, in this picture now let's move on to the next picture this is the picture of Merapi volcano here in Yogyakarta where I live originally I just wanted to capture the volcano and maybe a little bit of the forest in front of it but it's very boring you just see a hunk of volcano and a little bit of trees in front of it it doesn't really give you a lot of information so what I do instead of zooming in on the volcano I zoom out a little bit I got a bigger picture picture of this little villa this little house and the greenery in front of it and also the tree uh, just sort of like foreground of interest so that the whole picture becomes more interesting than just a landscape picture of a volcano let's move on to the next picture now the next picture here is a picture of the mountain nearby Grindelwald so it's the Alps mountain in the Switzerland and rather than just capturing the mountain by itself I want to give you a sense of context with this landscape photography so uh, this is not really a pure landscape photography because the uh, foreground of interest is actually a human made object so it's a uh, table a wooden chair and a little bit of house behind it but this really gives you a stronger context than just you know capturing the mountain by itself I think 
personally for me by doing this by showing you more in the picture you can really get a stronger sense of perspective but then again here's the uh, uh, difficult thing you have to delicately balance between showing more things and just keeping it simple because sometimes if you overdo you put too much in your foreground it's gonna mess up the whole image and and you're gonna get lost in the picture without knowing really uh, where to focus your eyes at now the next picture here is Lake Lugano and it's a beautiful morning in the Lake Lugano I stayed at Lugano at that time I want to show this majestic lake with the mountain behind it like the small hills with the little towns on the foothill and like on the valley and you know the beautiful sky and whatnot but it was really dull when I pictured it without the bridge that's in the middle of the picture so by including this little bridge in the middle of the picture I'm trying to have something like a foreground of interest that will you know guide you right in the middle of the picture to introduce you to the picture I think the picture looks better with the bridge than without the bridge now let's move on to the next picture this isn't really a landscape photography but here I just want to show you some techniques that you can do to enhance your uh, photography in general not just landscape so what I want to do in this picture originally is to capture the little towns on the foothill of the mountains and just to kind of capture the whole lake and the beautiful sky behind it but I didn't really find a good foreground of interest that time so that time I rode a boat and uh, we went from uh, we went from one side of the lake to another side of the lake so I try to think outside of the box rather than just doing what I usually do and I use the window frames inside the boat to frame the whole landscape picture using the windows yeah that's something that you can do this picture is not perfect it's kind of tilted a little bit and it's not perfectly spot on but you get the idea so this is not really landscape photography it's more like a travel photography in general but yeah you can use this technique in landscape photography too Moving on, this is a picture from New Zealand and again, I use a bridge, you know, for docking the ship, uh, sort of like f as a foreground of interest so that, you know, I can lead your eyes to the lake and the mountain behind it and, you know, sort of like to introduce you with the picture. Moving on, so this is a picture that I took from the top of Mount Sulphur in Banff. What I try to accomplish from this picture is to show you the city of Banff with the mountain behind it and the beautiful sky above it but I added the foreground using the trees the, f the little forest the snowy trees and in particular I found that a yellow tree on the left part of the image and the two tall trees on the right part of the image as the foreground so I think it kind of gives you the feeling of depth you know it's like layers that introduces you slowly to the city of Banff that's in front of it so yeah by now I hope you started to get the feeling of you know some of the things that I do in landscape photography to make it more interesting so what I want to emphasize from this landscape photography discussion is the importance of using foreground to enhance your whole picture so I hope you've been able to see the pattern of me trying to put foregrounds or natural framing in front of the main objects of my landscape photography pictures and I hope you understand the importance of it because you know not a lot of people understand the importance of having context in your photograph many people are just too focus in trying to capture the main object but they kind of forget to include little details that might enhance the overall picture so now it's time to talk a little bit about my gear so yeah as I mentioned earlier I use micro four thirds camera so I want to show you this little guy this is my Panasonic GX8 and it has the Panasonic Leica 15 millimeter f1.7 and it's not really my go-to uh, landscape photography pictures but some of the pictures that you uh, see earlier might have been taken with this lens now this is my wide angle lens that I used a few years ago before I switched to a newer lens so this is like my old wide angle lens it's the Olympus 9 to 18 millimeter f4 to 5.6 it's a pretty compact lens you have to kind of unlock the lens before you can use it 9 millimeter in micro four thirds is equal to 18 millimeter in full frame it's pretty wide it's not 
terribly wide but it's wide enough for most landscape pictures it's sharp enough for me it's not like ultra stellar the only drawback from this lens is that it's only f4 to f5 6 so the maximum aperture is not big enough so that it can capture low light but when the light is plenty this lens just does fine some of the pictures there were also taken using this lens this is the Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8 it's not really that wide this is for more like like a focus mid zoom kind of pictures but it has the f2.8 so it's pretty handy for low light this is my Panasonic 35 100 millimeter f4 to f5.6 so this is a little telephoto lens that's pretty handy to cap zoomed in landscape pictures sometimes it's not always about wide angle sometimes you can still get a good landscape picture using telephoto zoom like this now this is my other lens this is my Panasonic 14 to 140 millimeter f35 to f56 so this is like super zoom you can do a medium wide angle 14 millimeter which is like 28 millimeter in full frame up to 140 millimeter which is almost like 300 in full frame so it's you know uh, all around travel zoom I took some of the pictures in the in the series of pictures that I showed you earlier with this lens but now for my main wide angle lens and for my main landscape photography lens that I use is this lens that are recording this video right now it's the Laowa 7.5 millimeter f2 lens it's a fantastic little lens it's a manual lens meaning that there's no autofocus so you have to manually rotate the focus ring to get the perfect focus it goes all the way up to f2.0 which enables me to take landscape pictures in a darker environment or when the light is no longer plenty now for my landscape photography pictures all of the pictures that you just saw most of them are taken with my old camera that I've already sold so it's the Panasonic GX7 it's the uh, model that came out before for this Panasonic GX8 but for my future landscape photography I'll probably using this camera that is recording right now which is the Panasonic G85 I think it's a good enough camera it has the same sensor with the GX7 the benefit of using this Panasonic G85 is that I can also record stellar video in conjunction with taking landscape photography pictures so yeah why I stayed with micro four thirds when now there are like a lot of full frame mirrorless camera that is getting cheaper and cheaper with the lenses that are also getting smaller and smaller like as small as maybe micro four thirds lens and the image quality is much better than this one with the price that's also not too far from micro four thirds micro four thirds has inherently more depth of field so the background is less blurred you have more range in focus than full frame or APS-C camera and that's really advantageous because I can just use this Laowa lens that is recording right now at f2 and I'm gonna get the depth of field of like f4 in a full frame camera which means I can use lower ISO and that means a better image quality maybe not better than full frame but it's good enough for me I'm already invested in micro four thirds I have a bunch of micro four thirds lens and I think there's nothing wrong with them I don't want to switch to full frame just yet and I don't really see myself upgrading in the next five years I'm still good with micro four thirds even though people are now trying to get me into full frame oh look this new camera this and that and they're trying to persuade me to switch but I don't really see that significant jump of image quality coming from micro four thirds to full frame yes if you pixel peep you can see much more detail in full frame cameras than in micro four thirds but Again, I'm not a professional photographer. I think uh, for me, micro four thirds makes more sense. Even though the image quality is not as detailed as a full frame camera or APS-C. Sometimes I even capture landscape photography, not with my micro four thirds camera, but with my phone. This phone is an LG V30. It's one of those phones with the multi camera in it that has wide angle camera. And I've captured some good landscape photography pictures using this phone. See what I'm trying to say here is that gear doesn't really matter 
Don't focus too much on the gear. Focus on the process of making the picture. Make sure that the composition is good. Make sure that you find a good foreground of interest. Make sure that your object is good. Make sure that you shoot at the right time of the day. Make sure that the light is pretty. Make sure that the sky is beautiful. A lot of those little factors will add up to the image and makes your image good. So it's not always about gear. And gear won't guarantee your picture to become better than the average picture. So yeah, I hope this little talk about landscape photography has been useful for you. I hope this has been inspiring for you. Thank you so much for listening. So now I want to ask from you in the comment, please write down below which one of the pictures that I showed you earlier that you like the most. Let me know. Alright, so now we're gonna continue with my day. I want to play a little bit of guitar, you know. Today is a holiday, there's no work today and I want to practice a little bit with my guitar. I have something in mind that I want to play and maybe because it's holiday and I still have few more days off, maybe, maybe I will record a cover song of a church music as you guys been already requesting like since many months ago. Okay, so the song that I want to practice today is actually a church music. Maybe some of you have heard it, maybe some of you haven't. So uh, the title of the song is Dengan apa kan ku balas. You know, it's, it's really a beautiful song. It really touches my heart and it really reminds me a lot uh, to be grateful in life, you know. Yeah, I'm about to get freshen up and I will pick up my girlfriend soon and we're gonna spend the evening together, okay? So yeah, I'm currently on my way to pick up my girlfriend and we're gonna spend the evening together eating dinner. up my girlfriend and we're going to have dinner so see you later so i just uh got back from eating dinner now i'm back in my room and now uh i'm currently going to edit the vlog footage for today as you can see right there and yeah uh by the way thank you so much for all who's been watching all my recent vlogs all my other videos and you know been subscribing to my channel i really appreciate your guys support and please let me know how am i doing with all these vlogs and if you have any suggestions or comments please let me know so yeah i think i'm gonna end the vlog right here thanks so much for watching and yeah don't forget to like subscribe and comment and yeah thank you and goodbye